You know, when we walk down the aisle on our marriage day, we don't set out to find ways to destroy our marriage. But we all know that marriage can be difficult at times. We have two different backgrounds and communication styles, and we have two conflicting ways that we handle stress, and that stress shows up at the time that we don't want it to. So if you're not looking for a way to damage your marriage, your spouse isn't either, and you need to believe that. But in those stressful situations, in those situations where you've sensed distance between the two of you, each one of you is going to seek out ways to cope. Hopefully, you're going to find some healthy ways to cope. But sometimes, sometimes, we choose an unhealthy way. And then it starts, first with a lie. And that dishonesty zaps the oxygen from the room. When you learn of your spouse's betrayal, you'll descend quickly into a tailspin. You feel shock, anger, numb, disbelief, fear. That's a big one. And maybe even a sense of your world falling away. I know. I felt all that and more. And I thought it was my fault. But please listen to me. The affair, the pornography addiction, the cheating, the flirting with others, whatever you want to call this, this betrayal, it's not your fault. You did not cause this. Even if you knew there were struggles in your marriage, you are not responsible for the decision your spouse made to betray you. I want you to hear that. Your spouse made the decision to betray you on his own. When you first heard the news, did you think, how in the world did this happen? Well, each act of infidelity, and we don't like that word, but this is what it is, it starts often innocently. Listen to how one man described his affair. I'm going to call him Patrick. It's not his real name. He was hugely successful in the computer software business. Just for fun, he decided to open a clothing store on the side just as, as something else to do. Well, one day he was going to have coffee with a friend. And when the friend got there, he was eager to hear about the new adventure that Patrick had started. But Patrick was not interested in talking about that. And instead, he said, I'm having an affair, his eyes glazing over with tears. Does your wife know, the friend asked. And he said, she has no idea. Very slowly, he unpacked the story. There was a woman, a colleague, at work. She's bright, articulate, beautiful, and in an unhappy marriage. She and Patrick started talking. And before long, it went from just talking to a full-fledged affair. The problem was, Patrick felt guilty. He loved his wife and his kids. He did not want to lose his marriage, and he really wanted to do the right thing. Now, it's really quick, easy for, for you and me to judge someone who makes this decision, but don't deceive yourself. You are not above the temptation. Neither am I. One time on a job, there was an incident where I was working on a project with a male coworker, and it was kind of a tough project. And when we got, when we finally got this thing figured out after after several days and weeks of working on it, very innocently he crossed a personal barrier with me. I immediately felt uncomfortable, and and left. And then when I went home that night, I told my husband about the incident. After talking it through with my husband, he encouraged me to go back and confront this coworker the next day and to draw some very healthy, strict boundaries. That was a terribly awkward conversation, but the honesty in, in, in confronting that and talking to him created a very healthy in the boundary in the workplace, and we were able to work together for many more years in a very healthy manner. You know, the betrayal in my marriage didn't just tiptoe in gently and privately. It was a world crashing down of betrayal. My husband's hidden pornography addiction was discovered by his employer. His job was in jeopardy, and his confession that when he came home and told me about it sent me into a dark tunnel of depression. But ultimately, we've been able to recover. So if you've discovered your spouse's betrayal, here are three things you might be tempted to do, but they will cause further, further damage in your relationship. First of all, talk about the betrayal publicly. Social media and public disclosures, disclosures cause more damage to your marriage. I know you're hurt. I know you're angry. But please, please resist this temptation. You're only going to cause more harm 
and damage your reputation as well. The second one is going to sound strange, but it's true. Have more sex, either with your spouse or with someone else. This betrayal wasn't caused because you weren't sexy enough or didn't have enough sex or anything related to sex. This was a decision by your spouse to break your marriage, to, to betray your marriage, and to break your trust. While it's normal to think that if I just have more sex with my spouse, then things are going to be okay, it's not the truth. That's a lie. The other thing is thinking that I'll get back at my spouse and I'll go have an affair so he can understand how I'm feeling, that's just plain stupid. Do not do that. Not only are you harming yourself, but you're using another human being to get back at someone else. That is not respectful to the other person, nor yourself, nor your spouse. So don't even think about it. The third thing you can do to damage your, your marriage is to use words as weapons. As angry and as hurt and as confused as you are, don't resort to vengeful and spiteful words. Bite your tongue. Resist the temptation to verbally spar. Yeah, he broke trust with you, and it's going to take time to rebuild that. He has wounded you in a way that nothing else will wound you. I get it. Those are normal feelings. But the all, the, your uncontrolled tongue, your verbal anger lashing out at him is going to spark more fire in an already smoldering marriage. Speak the truth, but find ways to be gracious, kind, and even with your compa compassionate, with your spouse, especially if they are broken by, what, by their actions. Remember, God is greater than this betrayal. He'll heal you and your marriage if you allow him to work. Again, I know you want to do some of these things. I know that's a natural reaction, but let me encourage you to seek three healthy ways to handle your spouse's betrayal. First of all, acknowledge the pain and the grief you're experiencing. You've been betrayed. Call it what it is. Don't shrink back from these emotions. If you hope to heal, you have to deal with each one as they come. You can expect to feel a bit crazy and emotional or even unemotional. Oftentimes, the symptoms that you're going through as you initially recoup from the betrayal admission are PTSD-like symptoms. The second way to help is get help now. Don't wait. Don't stuff this. Don't think it's just going to get better on its own. It's not. You need help. So call a trusted friend. Maybe talk to a pastor. Seek a counselor who specializes in sexual addiction or talk with a coach. The worst thing you can do is keep it inside. That's the best thing that I did was that initial first phone call to get help. The third thing is be open to healing. And it might sound crazy at first, but you need to consider that your marriage may not be over. It might be. It might not be. But, and it's perfectly reasonable in the light of this betrayal to ask for a separation period so both of you have time to think and process and assess and get help. Dr. Robert Wise advises that this doesn't mean that you and your cheating spouse need to sleep in the same bed or even under the same roof. In fact, a bit of time apart might benefit you both, giving you some much needed space in which to think. The betrayal has to be dealt with openly and honestly and healthy boundaries need to be drawn. So don't be afraid to seek some space. Betrayal damages your marriage, but it doesn't have to murder it. God is greater than the betrayal. There are many people who are telling you just to walk away, but I hope you'll take some time to think, pray, and process. My husband and I are now living the best years of our marriage, more than 10 years after he admitted his addiction. Living a real 100% no hiding all in marriage is better than what we had before the pain, but we got help. We dug in, we did the work. If you've been betrayed, get help now, whether your spouse is ready or not. As one who's been there, I'd love to help you. You can reach out to me by leaving me a message on uh, Facebook Messenger, or you can send me an email to Kirsten, that's K-I-R-S-T-E-N, at KirstenDSamuel.com. Kirsten, K-I-R-S-T-E-N, D as in Diane, Samuel, S-A-M-U-E-L you can reach out to me there or send me a private message. 
The best thing I did was get help. I want you to hear this today. If you've been betrayed, healing is available. It's going to take time and hard work, but the end result is worth it. You can choose denial or you can choose to overcome. Until next time, have a great day.